Hi, welcome to Fabric with Substance. My name is Ronan Mahan and I'm going to show you how to use substance graphs within Unreal Engine 4. So we're going to use this cotton as an example of how to adjust the substance graph and what it does to the texture outputs. So you just want to find the material in the content browser. You can do that by selecting the object and finding content browser. And here within this cotton square pattern folder, you'll see we have our substance graph instance, all of our substance textures, our material, and the substance instance factory. The factory is the origin point for all the graphs within your content browser. And the substance textures come from the graph instance. Most of the time you want to be editing the substance graph node here. So let's go ahead and open up the Substance Graph instance and see what options we have available. Just double click on it and you'll see this details window opens up with lots of parameters for you to adjust. At the top here there's a label and description just describing the material for you. This section called Outputs is where you can choose which substance textures you'd like to generate. Right now we've got Base Color and Normal and our two channel packed textures. If we wanted to we could turn on Roughness and you'll see the texture appears here or if we untick it, it'll delete that texture. Whenever you delete an output, the graph instance window closes. So let's have a run through the options available to you in the power of the Substance Graph within Unreal Engine 4. The first thing available to you, which is really handy, is the output size. Right now we're set to 2K, if I was to set that to 256. You can see now that the texture resolution has dropped down to 256 pixels. This is great for setting the performance or quality level you want, and you can go all the way up to 4K which is the native resolution of the textures. So being able to set your output size is really handy. Depending on what platform you intend to deliver on, you can set the appropriate resolution for your textures. Next up is your colorization. So we can just select here and choose a different color for our texture. So very quickly we can change the output color. And this is all happening on the texture here. You'll see that the base color is changing. So we're not using the material editor to colorize this. This is natively in the texture. So you can also tweak how the color is applied by playing with the hue variation, chroma variation or luma variation. And what this does is it slightly modulates how the color is being applied. So if I tweak the hue variation you start to get other colors coming through. And the same for chroma and luma, luma being brightness and darkness. So that can be quite nice for getting a, a non-uniform colorization of your material. So that was single color colorization. We've also got two color and three color, and it's exactly what it says. This is mixing two colors, these first two colors here. Um, so I can change this to a red and a green. And this samples the underlying uh, texture and applies the color based on luminance. We've also got controls here for how that mask is being generated. So if we play with this slider, you can see that the colorization mask changes as well as the range so if you just want the green to just be a little bit down there or if you wanted to take start to take over most of the texture as well as the position and finally we've got three color which is mixing these three colors into your base color texture so this is all being done on the texture and again we can play with the mask positions and the, and the ranges here so you can get a very nice maybe like a, a wear effect if you want so say if we uh, choose this base color, maybe a slightly lighter top edge. So now we're getting a lot more interest in our colorization. We're not just using a single color. We've got a, a three color blend going on here. So this is all happening in the texture as opposed to in the material editor. So you get a very nice uh, control over the colorization as well as playing with your masks here just to get the blending just the way you'd like it. You can also reset any of these parameters to their default by pressing this little reset button here. The default of all, all of these parameters is the, the base scan that was made of the material. Next we've got uh, our base color contrast which is again a contrast slider for the end resulting base color as well as a luminosity slider just for bright and dark values. What's great to know about all of these colorizations and luminosity properties is that there is a PBR safe control right at the end of the graph. So you'll never be able to make the texture too dark or too bright. This will all stay within PBR safe uh, ranges, especially with your colors and, and the darkness of your 
textures, this will never go below 40 in the 255 range. So you won't go out of PB or safe range when you use these colorization methods. Next up, we've got some height map control. So the height map is packed into this AHF texture, which stands for AO height fuzziness. We have some height control here. And on this particular material, height is being used to drive the parallax occlusion mapping. So if I play with the height position here, you'll see how it affects the height texture. You can see the, the shape changing here. And this is sliding through our height map. So in case you want to push it away or bring it towards you. And you've also got some control here over the shape of the height map, whether it's really detailed or soft and, and more billowy, cloudy shape. Some of these parameters take a moment or two to rebake into the texture. So if you're not seeing any changes happen, just, just wait a moment and you'll see the material update. Next up, we've got some AO control. This is similar to the AO control on the material. This is just uh, reducing the amount of ambient occlusion and increasing it. The AO is quite subtle on this texture, so you may not see it straight away. You can also change the height scale of the ambient occlusion. So if we knock this value up and just wait a moment for the texture to rebake, you'll see that the ambient occlusion is much more prominent and much deeper recessed into the materials. It's rebaking the ambient occlusion map at a different height scale so you can get much deeper crevices and deeper recesses within the ambient occlusion and change how it affects your material. Again you can reset back to the default by pressing these little reset buttons. The opacity map influence uh, affects your opacity map for, for use when you've got the material set to masked and the scattering map influence it affects the scattering map so how it affects your material. You can also invert the scattering mask so you can get some really nice effects depending on how you plan to use the scattering map. So as you can see, the graph instance is really powerful. You get resolution control, you get lots of texture control that you can't normally access within Unreal. So you can see it's a really powerful way of, of using substance within Unreal. If you want to create a new instance of this material, the best way to do it is select the graph instance and duplicate and give that a name so this is we'll just call it instance one for now and you can see it automatically generates all the textures that you need um, however we're going to change this setup slightly we're going to use our packed channels so generate those two and we're going to remove some of the outputs that we don't need so now you can see i've set up my graph the way I want. I've got my four new textures and I can tweak this material the way I need it. So once you've generated your textures, one thing that you do need to do with these pack channel textures is you want to untick sRGB to make it linear color because this is data for the material to read. It's not a an image. And we'll do the same with the AHF. So make sure if you do generate new textures, these AHF and SRM textures, you should turn off sRGB. If you don't turn that off, you'll find that your values are incorrect and maybe the material looks very shiny and strange. Just make sure you turn off the sRGB. So this is now a linear color texture. Close that up. And the final thing to do is to duplicate the material instance and let's call this one red. Open up the material instance down to the bottom and slot in your textures. So the base color N is for normal, SRM, scattering, roughness, metallic, and finally AHF, which is ambient occlusion, height, and fuzziness mask. So now that we've got all of our textures plugged in and our materials set up, so we can come over here and change our color to red, and let's just apply our material to our asset. So I hope you can see the substance graph instances within Unreal are very powerful and allow you a lot of flexibility within your material work in Unreal 4.